guys, I'm sure coming at you today in Raid Shadow Legends. I am not alone. I am joined by first time guests. I am thrilled to have HWZ on the channel. HWZ, what's up, man? Welcome. What is up, dude? I'm honored to be here. Feeling good, feeling great. I, you know, what are we talking about today? We are talking, my friend, about some champions who have been absolutely disrespected, and we are sick of it. Uh, first off, for my viewers who are unfamiliar with HWZ, uh, I think we're going to do a little collab on his channel as well. I have it linked. You're one of my favorite creators out there. Tons of great content. Uh, you have a, a great way of looking at the game, and I love the positivity. I just love the, the, the vibes that you put across on your channel, man. So keep up the great work. How long have you been playing Raid, by the way? Tell Dude, us a little I've bit about playing... yourself. So I've been playing Raid for three years now. Um, you know, I started playing around the start of COVID. So three years strong. I'm a fourth grade teacher. I'm a husband. I'm a father. Love all it, of those man. good things, man. So that's 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 me. <laughs> awesome, dude. And again, absolutely love your channel. I'm sure my viewers will all check it out as well. Uh, looking forward to continuing to see you grow in this scene. Uh, so, dude, let, let's come with the thunder, man. Why don't you start first? We're going to share 10 champions, five each. Who we're just sick of it, man. We're sick of people crapping on these champions. You go first, man. Who you got? Number one is probably the most disrespected champion in the game of Raid Shadow Legends. That is Gerda. Oh, Gerda. you're coming with a thunder, man. All Gerda. right. All right. Gerda Bog Brew, your girl. The Bog Brewer. So, you know, this is a free champion, right? This is a champion you're going to get for logging in, right? Obviously, it's going to take you a long time to log in and get her. But, like, she's got, she's got some great skills, right? We've seen some people using her to, you know, solo the boss on the, you know, harder, not the hard dungeons, but the higher stages of the normal dungeon, stage 25. You got her doing Ice Golem. She can be used in Fire Knight. She can be used in Dragon. I even tested her out in Sand Devil, right? Because she has all of these turn meter mechanics, She's just a solid champion. Poisoners are, are, you know, highly valuable champions in the game. And I'm just glad, you know, we're starting to see her shine a bit. But I still feel like she's getting disrespected out here, Ash. Oh, man, dude, I'm not going to lie. I cannot, I cannot plead innocent on this one. Not that I, I agree with you, right? You look at her kit and you think, that's not that bad, man. It's not that bad. But I did include her in my top 20 worst legendary champions. Not in the top 10. But in the top twenty, man. So you don't you don't put her in yours, right? Like, what do you what do you give her a letter? You're a teacher, after all. Give her a letter grade, man. Give her a letter grade. If I had to give her a letter grade, it would be a B. I would Ooh. give her a B. The only reason I can't give her an A is because I feel like they probably made the ugliest champion they could have possibly <laughs> made when they made Gerda Ball. <laughs> yeah, they took War Mother and they're like, okay, how can we downgrade this a lot? <laughs> right. uh, you know what? I, I got okay, man. I, I respect the opinion. I, I respect that you didn't come in here and be like a <laughs> You know, like just just give the best champion out there. I like that you came with a thunder and you went with someone who a lot of people think is crappy. So props to you on that. And I agree, her kit is helpful for a lot of players who get it for free. You know, ultimately. So uh, I think that's a really good point. I'm gonna start with an epic on my list, man, and I'm gonna go with maybe a champion who's. You know, we're, we're, we're grading on the bell curve here, right? I think a champion who's a little bit better than people give them credit for, but obviously a champion that gets a lot of respect anyway, and it's none other than, I don't know what I'm doing here, nice revenant, none other than Tuak the Wanderer. Tuak the Wanderer, Tuak. man. I love Tuak. I think that he's like a really, really good champion. He's definitely worthy of the void epic status, in my opinion. He's one of like only, I want to say five or six champions, maybe a little bit more now that they keep adding them, but uh, they have the decreased speed. Certainly one of the only epics that has a decreased speed AoE on a three turn cooldown. The cool mm -hmm. thing about this dude is, is you get a lot of control. And you get a lot of damage from him, which is nice. He's a little squishy, which I'll definitely grant you. But he's stealing 50% turn meter. He's got a chance of putting a, a two-turn stun. He's stealing 100% turn meter if they have less than 50% HP. The AoE, as I mentioned, with, with, with decreased speed, increased speed on himself. He's healing himself all over the place. He's increasing cooldowns on his A1. I think that my man is bringing a lot extra to the table than just nukage. So, yeah, I'm a big, big fan of Tuak the Wanderer. Just got to keep him alive. Yeah, every time someone in my stream is, you know, I talk bad about I I I'm not gonna lie, I've talked bad about this champion, guys. Uh, I am, it's okay. I'm, I I've talked bad about Gerda, you know, so it's it's, it's all good. I'm guilty. <laughs> yeah, but 
you know, people are always tell me, dude, you you can't sleep on Two Hawk, man. He's a he's a void. You know, you gotta you gotta take a deeper look into the Void Champions. They are Void for a reason. This guy's definitely a sleeper of sorts. But you know, Ash, I'm sure you've done some great things with this champion. <laughs> he, he, his passive is also it also helps him out as a damage dealer. He's gonna do some damage mitigation for himself, so you yeah, know he can get yeah. right back in the game. I I really like his kit. I should probably invest in one yeah man like listen i have a lot of champions and i still use this dude in a few areas you know because he's just so good at dps and control man like he what he brings to the table he does it very very well who you got next man all right next on my list is going to be a shadowkin another void but this guy's a lego and i think that he gets absolutely you're not trashed you're man. not i'm, you're not I'm going, going with, there you know i'm going there ah! <laughs> i'm going with jing wong jing wong Oh man, you're bringing the thunder. I, I love this collab I gotta already. Go with my boy Jing Wong. All right, just because, just because, Ash. The passive. I've been I've been using no. this dude, bro. The passive, everything. Okay. I've been using this dude. Stage twenty five dungeons, hard dungeons. He can even be used in arena, in game arena. That passive. Let me tell you, with the Yuko, the 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 stun set mighty Yuko's running around yep, terrorizing yep. arena true. right now. That's true. That's true. This dude is literally going to remove it from the entire team. Place block debuffs on him. Get you right back into. And it happens game. at the end of the enemy turn too. That's kind of cool. That's cool, right? Exactly. You have to wait. It's not predicated exactly. on his speed at all, but it is on a four turn cooldown, which really sucks. You know. It, it it does it does that that sucks so you got to end the fight quickly after you know if, <laughs> yeah, you're, yeah. If, you, if you're relying on that but like even the rest of his kid is, is really good he's hp base you don't see him built as a nuker but i'm gonna build this guy as a nuker his multipliers are actually decent he's not magnar honestly can smack and of course my favorite place to use him the, the you know in-game dungeons just because you know he's got two turn cooldown to increase the duration of all debuffs two turns i'm loading up poisons on the bosses i'm constantly just increasing the duration of them this guy is my solo king all right hw did hwz convince you in jingwon having some utility to me although i hear you loud and clear i'm still not sure that i'm sold you know i, have to, I, I have hate to decrease i hate decreased crit damage i think it's a lousy debuff right Decrease oh, yeah. accuracy is okay. You know, it's okay. It's a four-turn cooldown, not a lot of damage. Uh, it is a two-time hitter, which is nice. And then I agree with you, two-turn on block active skills. But if they're under, like, here's the thing about it. Maybe we can agree on this, at least. His kit has potential. I will give you that, right? Definitely some potential. But, man, for a Void Lego, dude, you can't you can't lie to me. Or maybe, maybe you're telling the truth. Like, if you pull him out of a Void Shard, are you excited? Be, be real. No, because ah, okay. <laughs> by himself, no one goes G1. <laughs> <laughs> and no, you're one, not, but... you're, you're, I'm gonna be honest, you're not gonna be excited, guys, because you're gonna need a few other champions to really make him shine. He doesn't yeah. shine on his own, he does have that really so. cool hand on his shield, though. That's that's cool, that's cool. <laughs> uh, but okay, you made a good point. His passive, especially with Mighty Uko, you got me sold there because I'm so annoyed with Mighty Uko everywhere. So I agree. All right, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go on my next one with a champion that might surprise you because I think a lot of people love this champion, but I think he's way better than people give him credit for, and it's Euros the Soul Cage. Okay, so. When people talk about Euros, I feel like people think solo beast, right? Or maybe yeah. clan boss because of the poisons on the passive. But this guy is just, to me, one of the better overall champions out there in the game. Like, that's how good I think this guy is. He's got the AoE, uh, decreased turn meter on poisons, which he's bringing on his passive, decreased speed on with two or more poisons, which is nice, and then a stun on three or more poisons. Great uh, control on the A2. On the A3, we got the ally protect and the strength and big version on everybody on the three-turn cooldown, and he's really tanky. And then on this passive, man, here's the thing. Some dude in live arena, man, he trotted out Euros Soul Cage, and I have this like little internal giggle. I was like, ha, 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 Euros Soul Cage? Like, what are you doing with a PvE champion in Live Arena? And I'm not gonna lie, he smoked me. And it was Euros who smoked me, dude. And like, I'm I'm proud to admit that because it was really his passive that got me, man. It wasn't yep. the po we all think about the poisons, 
but he was provoking me endlessly. There's no cooldown here, right? Whenever yep. an ally is attacked under a strengthen, has a 75% chance of putting a provoke on the attacker, dude. My team was like perma provoked because they were all under strengthen. And like he just made sure they were all under strengthened and I was I couldn't do anything. And I was like, oh, my God, man, not only is it a great carry in any dungeon because of the A3, uh, yep. not easy, a good control, not easy, great against clan boss and areas like that. But this stupid strength and provoke, I was like, oh, my God, man, <laughs> this guy is really good. So, yeah, <laughs> you're a soul cage is going to be my guy. Yeah, hundred percent agree, man. I've actually built one of those annoying PvP. Yeah, rough. yeah, I did. So, uh, I wonder if I know the guy that you went up against because he was the first person I saw using him. But there's a guy in my old cluster who was like, "Yo, I'm using you rough out there in PvP." He was, uh, he was like, like he, he had to have been like a top. 30 live arena player because he okay. had he was like at the time of this recording it's not going to age well but he was around like 1600 or so i'm at like 1500 so i was like okay who's this guy gonna trot out and then he was like 200 trophies higher than me and i was like oh great like a top 10 is gonna be three tauruses and two marichkas and then it was euros and i'm like what uh and then he smoked me so anyway that was uh that's when i gained a lot of respect for euros the soul cage who you got next <laughs> Next, we have a champion that was also free. Um, okay. You know, if you got her in time, I feel like she was underappreciated when she was first introduced. And that is going to be Rhonda. Okay. Okay. Rhonda Everybody, was, I mean, Rhonda's great. Rhonda is a, we're seeing Rhonda shine now, right? And, uh, you know, a lot of people, when they first introduced her, they're like, okay, we got Rhonda. How is this going to be better than Ultimate Death Knight? Yeah. People are like, okay, we got another nuker. Uh, she doesn't hit that Another hard. Another Alexander the Great type. E yeah, ex yeah. Exactly, right? Slept on. Completely slept on. Right? Sorry. Oh, yeah, yeah. What a, <laughs> that Whatever. guy. He, uh, yeah, he's yeah. still... He, he, he actually might be... He should have been on this list. <laughs> I don't know. True. I don't know how good he is, but... Um, nah, Ronda, right. dude. We're seeing her shine now. Like, with Live Arena, obviously with the introduction of the duo... You need someone who can place block passive skills, block active skills, unresistible. The A1 ability just allows her to not care about being locked out with that passive because she's getting an opportunity to take a turn every time someone on the team is taking a turn and can come in and potentially smack you four times yep. And, yep. and just delete your champion. I think, you know, a lot of people slept on her. They were disrespecting her. They were looking at the commercials. They were, you know, just disrespecting Ronda. And, I, yep. I you know. I, I really like this champion. <laughs> you know what? I see a reoccurring theme with that, with all the free champions, because people disrespected Ninja back in the day. Oh like my. a lot of people don't remember, but people hated him. They're like, oh, that's this champion's crap, whatever. So then same thing happened with, you know, arguably Alexander the Sharpshooter and Deliana. Like they're serviceable for free champions, right? But then yeah. you move on to UDK. Like people hate on UDK in the very beginning, you know? And now Ronda and UDK is that's all I see, man. That's all I see. So good, good call out with with Ronda. Uh, next up, I'm gonna go with a fusion and a previous fusion or fragment summon, I think. And it's actually Versov the Grim. Verse off the Grim, you can tell I have a soft spot for ally attack champions because he also has on his A3. It's the same A3 as Zero's Soul Cage, except for with Strengthened. Instead of Strengthened, he brings increased defense on a three-turn cooldown. But this dude for HP-based champion, which traditionally hit the least hard between attack and defensive nukers, uh, he actually hits pretty dang hard. He can put out some damage, and he's bringing the Leech, so great heals on that A2, Reign of Sorrow, uh, an extra hit if they're under the CC debuffs. He's got the Provoke, 50% chance on the a1 a shield on himself on the a1 and then when hit he has a 20 percent chance of placing a provoke on the attacker so you know me i guess apparently i like the passive provokes as well with heroes and and first off the grim and he's nice and tanky i just think an hp and all battles by 33 percent i just think that he's not the best champion in the entire game but he is a really solid carry that you can get a lot of damage out of too so it's nice champ oh yeah definitely i um I actually slept on him as okay. a, you know, the fusion. I did not complete the fusion. So I've got like a bunch of, you know, frags, frags for this You're guy just sitting, sitting there. around. And then I eventually did pull him. And I was, I was happy when I pulled him because, you know, Night Rev Faction Wars is, is dreadful. Yeah. If you do not have like Tomb Lord, you know, if you don't have, you know, Theodore now, which I don't have either of those champions. Versus off the Grim is a, 
a great carry there, you know, alongside obviously like a wrecked draft, but he's a great champion. I, I couldn't agree with you more. Cool. Yeah. All right. Who you got next, man? Next, I got another freebie. Okay. You like the freebies? I got another freebie. I Where do I like going? the freebies. Actually, in that same faction. Okay. Right. I just I was gonna select RX earlier. Awesome. All right, I like this champion too. Yeah, so Aris is actually a, a really cool champion, and I'm seeing some people do some amazing things in arena with yeah. her. You know, we dig the HP-based champions because they bring that survivability you want, right? She's got an AoE stun, but the coolest part about this kit is got to be, you know, that counterattack she places on herself with the AoE A1. I've seen a crazy solo Aris arena team. Shout out to Sam Stolstice, but... Stone skin Oryx placing the counter attack on one turn, letting the other team just keep taking turns hitting her, and she just keeps counter attacking with the A1, just keeps like she's just deleting the team. Like, I love that. I have not tried her in arena, but I really want to now. I've seen some players use her in arena, so that's really cool. Oh, I like yeah. that. I like that as well. The counter attack with the stealing buffs, with another AoE stun, transferring random debuffs. Like, what an annoying champion to go against, right? And just gonna keep that, healing that every time you hit her. Yeah, yeah. just go you just gonna keep healing <laughs> every time you hit her with a, a critical hit, you know, in, in PvP content, the nuker should be crit capped. So she's gonna be getting hit with critical hits. Yep. So she's going yep. to be healing. I think this is, you know, people sleep on her. People say, you know, this champion is not great. She gets some little disrespect here and there. If people even remember to even bring her up, but I think great champion, people should, you know, invest more in. I totally agree. I did a video on her semi recently, and I was also pretty wild. Like, even Hydra, she's great. Good, the counterattack, the pass, everything, for all the same reasons that you brought up. And aesthetically, dude, she looks, like, super, super cool. Right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. One of my oh, favorite-looking yeah, champions out there. All right, next, I figured I'd throw a rare on the list. <laughs> Challenge myself to put a rare. And I, I'm going with Abyssal. Abyssal from the Demon Spawn faction. I really oh, yeah. like this rare support champion. I remember when he came out, people were like, wait a second, maybe a rare worth maybe upgrading. But I felt like the temperature kind of went to lukewarm, to cold, and not many people were talking about Abyssal after that. Uh, but for me, dude... We talk about like Soulbon Boyer having that AoE on the A1 in a stun set and what great control. Uh, well, he's got that, but then he's got a 30% block bust, which may not sound like much, but you know as well as I do that there's so many annoying buffers in all of these wave content, wherever, and this is where yep. you're using Abyssal, right? Whether it's a yep. Doom Tower secret room, a regular Doom Tower floor, Faction Wars, block buffs, even at a 30%. Man, it lands way more often than you'd think, and it really makes a big difference, you know? So, love oh, the yeah. A1. Uh, got a heal on the A2. Not the most powerful heal, but a heal nonetheless. There's not that many AoE, you know, healers uh, in, in the rare category. And then, Wards of Madness. Again, it's not, it's kind of like a Bellower type thing, right? Where it's mm -hmm. the weak version of decreased defense and increase, or increased defense and increased attack. But yet, for a team that you don't already have both of those buffs... It's really useful, especially on the same ability to have. It's better the weak version than no version, right? So mm -hmm. I feel like, I mean, he's just got a, like a, a very basic kit, but he's bringing heals. He's bringing two of the most essential buffs in the in the game. He's bringing block buffs, and he's bringing control in a stun set. So I'm a big fan of Abyssal. Oh, yeah, me too, dude. I, I did a video on this guy because I absolutely love him. He was, yeah. without him, I would not have been able to finish, you know, Demon Spawn Faction Wars. 100% would not have been able to do it. Those Valk waves, man. Yeah. you. This champion can come through heavy for you. If you don't have, you know, I don't have Duchess. I don't I don't have Kandrafon. I don't have a, a lot of, you know, heavy DPS champions. Obviously, I have a, a Magnar now and stuff. But when I completed it, dude, trying to get through there, trying to rely on Umbral Enchantress, the Epic, who, yep. you know, we're going to get that block buff, so, you know. And then it's going to fade away. This guy's got it on the A1. He's keeping it up the whole time. You know, just get him taking turns. Yeah. Amazing champion. Yeah, man. I, I, I love him. And I the same. I, he wasn't out when I completed Faction Wars, but I was with you, dude. Nice Revenant was the third to last faction war I completed. And you mentioned that oh, being Demon's difficult. Spawn. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. yeah. Nice. And then Demon's one was the second to last. And then Dwarves was the last one that I was able to uh, able to beat. But again, similar to you, man, like right now I have all the OP legendaries. But back then, 
I have I was running Tanix Hate Flower and like uh Infernal Baroness and stuff. Like it was a budget team and took a lot of RNG. But yeah, I wish I had an Abyssal back then. Uh but yeah, okay. So who you got next, man? Last champion is gonna be champion. a recent fusion Supreme Elhane. Ooh, okay, that's a pretty good one because she gets a lot of hate. Oops. I feel there like she's still, you know, we haven't we haven't gotten out of the disrespect phase for her, right? We she's haven't gotten out of it. No, champion. She's we're in still it. we're still there. We're yep. still in it, right? Uh, you know, a lot of people saying, "Oh, this is an easy pass as far as a fusion. I'm skipping. I'm not gonna do it. I'm gonna wait on the next fusion, what have you." But this champion absolutely is amazing for live arena. Why? Because you're going against a Necrit team. You know that chances are Necker is going to be, you know, protecting that nuker. She can go ahead, lay that nuker down, then go into an AOE because she yep. gets an extra turn. Like people slept on this champion and, you know, the possibilities of what she could, you know, add as far as value over time. And I think that, you know, we see a lot of champions like that. I really like Supremo Hain. I just fully booked mine. I'm about to master her and I'm going to get her built and take her in a live arena. Congrats, man. Have a lot of fun with her. She's definitely effective. I wouldn't put her as like a top tier uh, nuker out there. Like to me, I'd rather have a, I almost put him on my list. I'm just looking for an excuse to mention this dude, right? But I'd rather have a Constantine, the Dayborn type, you know, uh, especially with the not Deny Revival. But I totally see what you're talking about in this meta in particular. Well, let me go. I keep going to Supreme Aethel like an idiot. Uh, but I, I totally see what you're talking about. It's really nice. The synergy in her kit is really, really nice, you know? To mm -hmm. your point, getting that extra turn, it's almost, I feel like it's almost mandatory on single target nukers now after the advent of like the nutcrackers of the world and like all these extra turn champions if you kill somebody, uh, especially Void, right? I would be disappointed yep. if that extra turn was not there like a Kutraxa. Uh, yep. And then going into the AoE, like you said, and then resetting the cooldown again of the A3, right? Like really, really cool synergy in her kit. And I agree. And she could deal some serious damage too. So good call oh, yeah. out there. And you're right. We are in the hate phase. I still see a lot of people, uh, a we're lot still, of people hate. You know what, dude? I gotta, I, before I give you my last champion, I didn't put her on my list, but dude, big controversy here on my channel about Pixneal. I was trying to tell people she's not the worst champion in the game. And I want you to give it to me straight. Like, how do you feel about Pixneal real quick? I wish they would roll back that buff that buff they did so she could be viable for Hard Fire Night 10. Um, I don't think she's the worst champion in the game, though. Okay, that's all I wanted to hear. All right, moving oh, on. So. <laughs> Listen, she has too many books. I will say that. Like, seven books for only damage on the A1 is ridiculous. But, yeah. dude, she's got a guaranteed freeze. She got to increase defense continuously. Okay, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna drop that. I'm gonna drop it. I don't want to get off off base here. Too bad. <laughs> gonna start a, a fight in the uh, the comments again. All right, my last is gonna be the first Shadowkin champion ever added to the game. He was a a, a fragment summon or a fusion. Is Yoshi the Drunkard? I feel like I mentioned this guy a lot in underrated champions or disrespected champions. But this guy, I mean, I'm just gonna keep it simple. Looking at the A3, well, actually, I'm, I'm, I'm going to keep it kind of simple. On the Partier, great for the arena, right? Fills the Champions turn meter by 4% every time an enemy receives a buff. That just keeps going, especially in this go second meta. He's always getting that turn meter fill. But really, it's all about the battle toast, all about the A3. Increase attack, increase accuracy, 75% true fear, 100% if they're under increase uh, attack buffs. It's really one of the best. Like, if you need speed, you go with Arbiter for a setup, right? But if, mm -hmm. if you're not super concerned with like having the most speed you know possible in the game, especially in this meta right now with a lot of go second teams, having increased attack and increased accuracy and true fear on the enemies as an opening move on a three turn cooldown is so powerful. Not to mention there is no better, nobody even close to setting up a bomb team to Yoshi the Drunkard in the game with the increased accuracy and increased attack to make sure you're landing the bombs and make sure you're you know stacking that attack to get the more out of your bombs. So I really love that he has the control built in. I just think that this eight, this one battle toast move is so powerful and people don't give him enough credit in my opinion. Oh yeah, definitely, man. Especially if you get, you know, God forbid you get a good awakening for him. You put temp chains on him with his passive. Yes. This dude, this dude could cut in and, and yep. be a terror. 
Yeah, so, a little Valkyrie reaction, a little jealousy it, going on exactly, right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I think I think this is a good a good addition to the list, man. All right, man. I will thank you guys. You can let us know if you agree or disagree with the champions that we mentioned in today's video. I'm sure that you enjoyed HWC being here on the channel. Check out his YouTube channel, guys. We'll have more collabs in the future, I'm sure. HW, thanks for coming on, man. I appreciate it. Anytime, man. Anytime. Thank you for having me. All right, guys. That's going to do it for the video. Thank you for watching. And as always, take care, guys.